shorter days, terrible snowstorms, and freezing temperatures. Winter in the north is an unforgiving season. It's no wonder many species of birds leave this place in fall before the harsh weather arrives. Remarkably though, plenty of other birds stay. With winter in full swing, I figured a video on how birds survive the northern winter would be good. Here are some of the interesting and fascinating ways a few birds get by. Enjoy! One of the most familiar, widespread, and welcome feeder birds of North America are these tiny, big personality birds, black-capped chickadees. It's hard not to wonder how such a small bird can survive blistering temperatures and stormy weather. As with many other birds enduring such cold weather, one great adaptation they have to keep their core body temperature warm is to fluff out their feathers. Over the winter season, they look twice as big. In fact, many people often think they've fattened up. And while they do also fatten up over fall for winter, the fat they put on is really not noticeable. Certainly not to the extent that they look when fluffing out their feathers. A chickadee's metabolism wouldn't allow them to pack on this much fat. And would they even be able to fly as efficiently had they fattened up that much, if at all for that matter? I don't think. How they survive over the winter nights is truly remarkable and quite touching too. Each blackcap will seek refuge in small holes or other crevices in trees to help shield them from some of the cold. On nights when it's especially cold, they can even reduce their overall body temperature anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees. The smaller the difference in temperature between the bird and its environment, the lower the rate of heat loss. Clever adaptation. Another thing they do is eat a lot on those short days of winter, much more than they do in summer. Eating extra food allows them to accumulate some fat before nightfall, enough to sustain them over the cold night. But if it's really cold, regardless of being sheltered from the elements and dropping their core temperature, they may have to do something else, and that is shivering, which helps to increase heat production. Some cold nights, they will shiver all night, burning up their fat reserves in order to survive, repeating this process each day until warmer days arrive. Touching indeed. And what about those exposed little legs and feet that somehow don't freeze? How do they do it? Do their feet feel cold? Yes, they do. On purpose, in fact. A clever adaptation where they regulate their foot temperature near the freezing point. The temperature of their core is not that cold, however, and if a chickadee were to try to regulate the temperature of their feet in winter to the same level as their core, it would lose heat extremely quick, and thus would be energetically costly. Any bird that tried this would deplete their caloric intake tremendously. They simply wouldn't be able to eat fast enough to keep their feet temperature regulated at the same temperature of their core. So the solution is to cool their feet down near to the freezing point, but not below freezing. This is done by constricting blood flow to their extremities, thus reducing heat loss without risking frostbite. Specialized scales on their legs and feet also help reduce heat loss and it should be said that their feet and level of comfort isn't like ours. We wouldn't be able to do what a chickadee can. Of course, this doesn't mean though that their little feet don't succumb to the cold. When it gets too cold, another thing they can do to warm them up is to tuck one foot at a time up into their body and feathers. As I mentioned earlier, they eat a lot more in winter. For most of the year, these guys are insect eaters, Obviously, finding enough creepy crawlers would be quite the challenge, since everything is snow-covered and it's cold. They aren't completely absent, though. Chickadees are great at finding insect pupae hidden behind bark of trees. A big help, though, is the fact that they switch over to eating a more vegetarian diet, consuming seeds from native trees such as tamarack, spruce, and many others. The occasional berry or bite of an apple helps, too. Animal carcasses are taken advantage of as well, but the greatest advantage chickadees have is their ability to cache food away and remember those hidden food items, which can be as many as hundreds and even thousands all stored away throughout their territory. Truly remarkable little birds. It must be said though that we can provide such relief for them over winter just by putting suet, thistle, and black oil sunflower seed feeders up in our yards. Always make sure to keep the feeders and area around clean though. Sanitize feeders at least once every week or two depending on activity. If you see sick birds, take down feeders altogether to limit spreading of the disease. 
I'll link some good articles to help you clean beaters properly down below in the description. Not as familiar or widespread, but a favorite of mine, this wonderful chickadee, the boreal, is at home in the boreal forests in Canada and also in some locations in the northern states. They aren't as common at backyard feeders, but these guys have all the adaptations of black cap chickadees. Due to their submissive behavior though, boreal chickadees need to be able to adapt when in the presence of the more aggressive black cap chickadees, moving further up trees to feed rather than in the middle or lower canopy where they prefer to forage. Just as the black caps retrieve previously hidden food items, boreal chickadees do too. Both insects and seeds are wedged into crevices in the bark and solidified in place with the bird's saliva. Typically, boreal chickadees store food items on the undersides of branches so it's easier to retrieve them when the branches are snow laden. Caching food is likely vital for winter survival in the harsh northern environment. There was a study done which revealed that boreal chickadees cached mostly insect larvae as well as some spruce seeds, helping them to survive over winter. Living in a place that can see temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius means that they need to be equipped with a nice warm winter suit. So in fall, they grow a few extra feathers and their feathers are also more dense than other birds. Weighing no more than a nickel and not much larger than the average person's thumb, the odds are against these guys who brave the cold winter north. Golden crown kinglets are half the weight of chickadees, so they are small, but don't be fooled by their looks. These guys are hardy birds, and given the fact that they are half the weight of a chickadee, don't switch to eating a vegetarian diet of seeds and fruit, don't cache food, and rarely, if at all, visit feeders, these kinglets are way more amazing. I've never been lucky enough after all these years to get much decent videos or pictures, so this will have to do. I just had to include these birds. When it comes to small birds, surviving winter is a constant battle because they have to use a lot of energy in order to stay warm. Larger animals have a lower surface to volume ratio than smaller animals. As a result, they radiate less body heat per unit of mass and are therefore able to stay warm using less energy. Surprisingly, these little things continue to hunt and glean for insects during winter. There isn't much insects to find during the desolate season though, so how do they do it? As I said, they don't switch to eating a vegetarian diet. Yes, they do consume some seeds, but not enough. Remarkably, studies have revealed that a species of moth caterpillar helps the golden crown kinglet survive. These caterpillars attach themselves to pine trees, camouflaged as twigs for the winter. Golden crown kinglets, it turns out, are pretty good at spotting them. I guess better than chickadees. So, mystery solved, they do somehow find insects. Although they actually find insects to eat during the desolate winter, it was calculated by researchers that what they consume in a day doesn't build up enough fat to fuel their metabolism for the entire night. It is only enough to sustain them for half the night, meaning they would be unable to stay warm throughout a winter night based solely on their daytime diet. So how do they survive an entire winter night of freezing temperatures if the food they eat only gets them by for half of it? They do have a solution, and it's quite a touching one. In the post where I obtained much of my info for this video, the author, Bernd Heinrich, who has written over 20 books, including Mind of the Raven and Winter World, wrote of his experience trying to discover where it was the kinglets would go at night. For years, he was unable to see where they went until one evening when he seen a few birds fly into a pine at dusk. Later, equipped with a flashlight, he cautiously climbed the tree and ended up discovering a four-pack of golden crown kinglets huddled together into one bunch, heads in and tails out on a twig. Burns said that one briefly stuck its head out of the bunch and quickly retracted it, indicating it was staying warm and not in cold torpor as birds that are in cold torpor have limited mobility. So the kinglets were using one another as a heat source, therefore reducing their own heat loss. By huddling together, they were their own shelter. Although golden kinglets have several great adaptations, winter is still very tough on them and only one in six will survive a full year. I found that a very sad fact to learn. If I ever succeed with getting better videos and pictures of these fascinating little birds, I'll definitely make an entire video about them one day. 
Red poles are another astonishing small bird. They can survive up to 20 hours without access to food, even if temperatures drop to as low as minus 50 degrees Celsius. This is because they have specially designed esophageal pouches that allow them to hold onto seeds and slowly digest them later on. Being able to do this allows red poles to maintain their core at 40 degrees Celsius. Pine siskins, another small finch, can do this as well, storing as much as 10% of its own weight in their crop. I have read before that red poles will tunnel in snow to stay warm in winter. I also found an article from a couple of years ago where someone had reported seeing red poles on a neighbor's roof, just coming out from roosting. And apparently almost every roof with snow in that neighborhood had evidence of red pole holes. That's a pretty clever way to stay warm and protect it from the elements overnight. The clever beauty of the northern woods. How could I do a video without including them? Being a big brain corvid, these birds know a thing or two when it comes to surviving the winter. For one, they hoard food away in fall to prepare, retrieving those cash food items when needed. Being an opportunistic omnivore helps too, allowing them to take advantage of just about any food source that comes their way. Apples, hazelnuts, berries, backyard feeders, and even carrion. They will also catch small animals like shrews, should one dare to come out. One thing I've noticed with blue jays all these years of observing them is that in the winter they kind of get secretive and once they've found a spot they feel comfortable, it's likely they'll stay there for a while until it warms up or the sun comes out. Much of the cold winter days, the jays that I know spend it hidden away in the forests of dense evergreens, coming out only long enough to eat. This leads me to assume that they also roost in the very dense evergreens overnight well protected from the elements with their feathers fluffed out and head tucked down. Often, when it's extremely cold, they fluff out tremendously, looking like they've packed on a considerable amount of fat. But it's all just fluff. By fluffing out their feathers, they create small pockets of trapped warm air between their body and feathers, providing them with added insulation. That is why so many birds fluff out their feathers in winter. It's a great adaptation. On those especially cold days, the jays often sit on a perch with their feathers and body resting over their legs and feet, shielding them from the cold. Other birds, like nuthatches, get by over winter doing pretty much all the things the other birds do, switching to eating more seeds and nuts, some fruit, checking the bark of trees for small insects hidden away for winter, and retrieving their cached loot. And woodpeckers, of course, have a pretty good advantage in winter. They can drill deep in the trees with their strong bills in search of wood-boring larvae. If all else fails, a visit to a nearby suet or seed feeder should help. At night, the nuthatches and woodpeckers sleep in cavities of trees like chickadees do, protect it from the weather. A pretty cool thing about woodpeckers that stay for winter is the fact they excavate many roosting holes over fall to prepare for the coming winter. Before everything else, preparation is the key to success. In this case, the key to upping the chances of surviving or at least not freezing to death overnight. Staying ready so you don't have to get ready. Smart woodpecker. And another bird like the rough grouse, very common throughout North America, will gorge on seeds of alder and spruce and store it in their large crop, kind of like a bag that after being filled, can later deliver food to the gizzard for digestion throughout the day or night. One grouse can pick enough buds in roughly 20 minutes to sustain them overnight. This helps because the less time out in the elements, the better. And the food slowly digesting overnight will keep them from freezing. Rough grouse will also hide under the snow in a snow tunnel they've created, insulating themselves. And they may even spend as much as 16 hours there. And of course, I should mention the Canada jay. These guys are widespread resident of North America's boreal and subalpine coniferous forests, and they really truly are hardy birds of the north. Unlike other birds that can switch over to eating seeds and things like that, instead they have to rely on their cached food, which a lot of it is perishable. And of course they take advantage of any carcasses that they come by. Their bills are really equipped for tearing and ripping. 
One of the things that is of concern for these birds, since they rely heavily on cash food over winter to survive, is that mild winters, one like it has been in my area this year, cold and then mild and then cold again, is bad because the back and forth of freeze thaw will spoil perishable food items. Not good. Probably the most remarkable is the fact that they even nest in winter, proving how well suited they are to the northern environment. Truly a rugged bird of the north. So there you go, some interesting ways in which a few northern birds get by. Of all the birds I went over, it's the little birds that I have the greatest respect and sympathy toward. How hard they work to survive winter, it's moving to say the least. What was some of the favorite things you enjoyed learning about in this video? Comment below and let me know, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I truly hope that you enjoyed. Take care. Happy birding. Oh, which reminds me, I finally have a new shirt available. Happy birding. There are two different versions. If you'd like one, a link will be down in the description as well as in the comments pinned at the top. Thank you very much for the support. It's greatly appreciated.